Thursday, everybody! Yeah! Almost Friday. It's a fun day, too. So it's one of those special nights for us when we let you, the audience, choose the monologue topic. Nobody else does this. It's a segment that we call... The Audience Decides the Story! kind of redundant at this point. I mean, I had already said that, but the rules are this. I tell you two topics, and the stronger clap determines which story we're going to choose. FYI, this is exactly how my parents determined who got fed at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the first story, the inflation rate, as you know, is a critical measure of an economy's health. Therefore, understanding how it correlates to other economic measures in a stable economy might help us comprehend these inflationary cycles. All right, so the second topic, what the hell is up with the trans high school shop teacher <laughs> in Canada with giant inflatable boots? Wait, don't touch You guys can't follow the rules. We're going to have to do it all over again. All right, so let's compare Sh the story one on inflation. <laughs> you don't count, Tyrus. <laughs> story two, also on inflation. <laughs> All right, settle down, you perverts. <laughs> So the audience decides. Giant breasts wins by a nipple. <laughs> I admit the contest was a bust. But that means it's time for... If it happens up there, we report down here. You're watching Gazumbagate. Canada 2023. Week 13. Man, this story is getting bigger and bouncier. <laughs> And like Dagan's old report cards, there's a lot of D's. <laughs> so as a favor to people who just tuned in for the first time, here's a quick recap. She, what's once a he, began identifying as female last year and started wearing massive prosthetic breasts to class. The school board still stands behind the teacher. <laughs> no other choice. In the unlikely event of a water emergency landing, <laughs> your shop teacher can be used as a flotation device. We're the only show that keeps diligent tabs on the Ontario transgender teacher with the oversized prosthetic breasts and saucer-sized nipples. Is this truly a trans teacher or is it a prank that's gotten way out of hand. How about a little common sense? Women don't even look like that in my dreams. The shop teacher was recently pictured in all her immense boobery skydiving. Exactly. So what happened? What's happened since then? Well, parents of the Oakville Trafalgar High School students have hired a lawyer to begin legal proceedings against the district school board. They're frustrated with the board's lack of transparency unlike the teacher's sweater. <laughs> and they're fearful of the growing threats of violence against the school over the overt sexual attire of a transgender teacher. So they took action. Students First Ontario, that's the group numbering in the hundreds, said parents have followed board protocol initially, taking their concerns to school administration and the board and directly to their trustees. But the board stands by its official statement in response to the teacher's large, prosthetic, and brawless breasts. As always, the board, quote, is committed to establishing and maintaining a safe, caring, inclusive, equitable, and welcoming learning and working environment for all students and staff. And oh yeah, did we mention we love giant <laughs> I don't think that was in there. Students are also being threatened with suspension if they photograph the teacher. That's interesting. And yet here we are, the only show covering this surreal, thought-provoking story. And why? Is it because I'm obsessed? No, maybe I just need to get this off my chest. You see, a parent at this school is in a no-win situation. It's like a meeting where the only two empty seats are on either side of Brian Kilmeade. <laughs> lose, lose. <laughs> you can just see him sitting there. The trans teacher is either trolling the school or demanding protection for a fetish masquerading as a non-binary trait. But if that costume is then welcomed, 
Why not any behavior? What stops a teacher from putting a giant prosthetic penis in their pants? Don't think I haven't thought of that. <laughs> you didn't know this, but I teach intro to twerking at the local junior college. I need all the help I can get. So you can take your private fetish public, and as long as you portray yourself as a target of hate, it works. What if the principal is a dominatrix? Kids will have to take their whipping or get called a bigot, which will mean more whipping. Now, what if we just ignored this story? Well, then we allow the non-science of gender activism to unleash public fetishism on all of us. The inmates will be running the asylum, and it will look that way with all the bondage. I mean, what if you have a fetish? What keeps you from sharing it at work? Telling Geraldo to cover up that thong would get me called to HR. Ducey would turn Fox and Friends into a furry convention. And what of the shop teacher? You'd think the whirling razor sharp teeth of a table saw would be enough of a deterrent to keep mammary glands McGee from the classroom? No, not at all. What if my fetish is flashing? It's not much different than a man slapping on giant breasts with nipples the size of frozen pizza. So why can't I wander the halls in an open robe if that expresses my true self? It's true, I always wanted to be Charlie Rose. <laughs> Tonight's guest, he has five daughters and high blood pressure, American Conservative Union Chairman Matt Schlapp. She's got the eye of the tiger in a jar on her desk. Co-host of The Bottom Line. Congratulations. Starting January 23rd on Fox Business, Gagan McDowell. Like bathroom towels, you'll always find her hung over in the shower. Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. <laughs> and finally, he has no clue what a ladder is. My massive side to get in the NWA's World Heavyweight Champion, Tyrus. So, Matt, I think this might be the first time you're on the show when I've covered this topic. Is that true? Yes. But your wife has been on many times. She's Whoa. talked about this? She's talked about it a number of times, and you wouldn't believe her opinions on it are quite shocking, if you ask me. We won't get into that. How do you uh, assess or grade my reporting so far or analysis on this topic? This is not, uh, <laughs> this is not shown up on any show, as far as I know, anywhere. You know, I have one of those that's called a belly. <laughs> and the, uh, <laughs> and all I can think of is what would have happened if Dr. Fauci had become a plastic surgeon. <laughs> I also am a little embarrassed because my pastor said he loved to watch me on Gutfeld. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> we had to start here. But don't you think that there is like a slippery slope? And I'm not talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's like if this, if 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 if, if you can't stand up to something that is obviously fetishistic, then anything can go. We have unleashed, uh, we have made heroes of people who seem to be struggling uh, in their lives, and it seems to be front and center in our classrooms. Yeah. And I think a lot of Americans find it rather repugnant. It's good to mock it, mm -hmm. but after the mockery, we gotta make this stuff stop. Like, mm -hmm. go live your life, it's fine, but don't uh, pollute the minds of... Yeah, we don't, we got nothing, you can dress any way you want, but this is like, you know, there are kids there, and, but, and uh, I'm gonna keep covering this story until it's, you know, I'll just keep covering it. Congratulations, Dagan. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Dagan's got a new show premiering on Fox Business called The Bottom Line. Is that correct? Bottom Line? Thank you. Yes, yes. With Sean Duffy. Thank you. Sean Duffy. Now, who's that? Rachel Campos. <laughs> Duffy's husband. We all know who Sean Duffy is. He's got like 700 kids. Yes, he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's like that eight is enough guy. Remember yes. That show? Exactly. Yes. So, the kids are threatened with suspension if they take a picture of the teacher, yet the teacher can basically, who is looking for attention, can be there. Does that make sense? Uh, no, and all of the kids in the school, and even the teachers who have to be upset about this, have a way to fight back. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to start wearing super tight jeans, like Dwight Yoakam tight, mm -hmm. and they all need to start wearing ginormous prosthetic scrotums. Oh. Like, and, and it doesn't have to be something you buy on the internet, uh, but like... What, you, what, you make homemade? <laughs> yeah. Like you grow them in your garden, Dagan? <laughs> like, ball up a giant sweatshirt and shove it in your jeans. Mm. Look, at, like, 
look like you got a big old possum in your pants. Mm. Or like a wombat in your britches. But everybody needs to be walking around like they are very un like yes. uncomfortable. We can't show it. Everybody, <laughs> everybody in the entire school, because it will descend into chaos. Yes. Now, the kids won't be able to sit for more than like a couple of minutes because yeah. they got a giant scrotum in their pants as big as that Z cup prosthetic. And it's not a D, it's a Z, and it costs about 760 Canadian dollars. Because uh, I looked on Etsy. Just, uh... <laughs> I, I digress. But Megan, again, this... you will never, nobody will ever be able to play sports. You can't, with a big old, again, wombat in your britches, you can't run to first base. Dagan, uh... They'll have to stop school. Dagan? Yeah. Uh, stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is from uh, Hollywood Reporter that uh, Fox has uh, decided to shelve the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now it's being replaced with something called the Duffy Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Duffy Zone. No wombats will be hurt. Yes, exactly. No wombats will be hurt. Another in the career zone. destroyed by me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who to go to next because I know both of you despise this topic. So I'm. Take it away, Kat. I need time. Well, no, but Kat, you got it. Like, you know, there are a lot of things I don't like to talk about, but I think there is a good. Uh, this is a philosophical question, right? <sighs> Okay, when you say you're the only person covering this, you really are the only <laughs> yes. person. And it's so fascinating mm. because that's a philosophical study to <laughs> yeah. me. Because there's nobody that you're doing this versus. Yeah. There's like Don Lemon's not opening his little morning show. Like the transphobia has gone too far at Fox News and then showing you talking about this. Maybe he should. Nobody, there are people who, you know, live to call out other people for transphobia, but this, they're like, <laughs> silent. Yeah. Got nothing to say. Be nobody, nobody thinks this is like normal mm -hmm. or cool, except for apparently some people in Canada, but Canada's not real. No. So here, <laughs> I mean, nobody thinks that, like, we have to blur it out. Yes. <laughs> and like, there's no And they kids can't here. blur it out at school. Yeah, exactly. They can't, we, she can't, they can't have a big, they should cut out these giant things of something blurry and tape it to the nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so they walk around, they're like big giant plates of blurriness, like satellite dishes, Tyrus. <laughs> Tyrus, yeah, I got the gist. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Tyrus, I heard you went bowling last night. How was that? Yeah, it was great. Phenomenal. Yeah, um, you went bowling. Anything, with... anything spherical, you're going to want to talk about it. You're going to end up talking about Generation Z over there. <laughs> gonna... Listen, I, I was ready to talk about economics tonight. Shame on all of you. Uh, and unfortunately, I, Dagan, uh, you got to run longer, wider strides. Helps uh, bag your pants also. But um, unfortunately... <laughs> Oh, I have to draw you a picture. You want All me right, to do it? get to the point. All right. Unfortunately, <laughs> because you would be identifying as a man, you would have been suspended as soon as you walked in the door. Mm -hmm. Where are the feminists on this? Why is it that when a man decides to transition uh, to get attention, they always super sexualify what it is to be a woman? Wearing a tight skirt and having your nipples showing is not what it is to be a woman. Right. It is what it is to be a fantasy of a man who watches too much porn. But everyone is treating this with gloves. Well, I, I would wear gloves too. But <laughs> they're not calling her out on her inappropriateness. So the needs of the fetish yeah. is more important than the needs of the children in the community because of the virtue signaling, when that, by definition, has nothing to do with womanhood. Very there you good. go. Yeah, oh. uh, see? Oh That's why we do these That's stories, right. Kat. I, okay, all right. I just, I'm, I'm imagining like if you're a parent and your kid's not doing well in shop class and you have to go like talk to this teacher. <laughs> yeah. Right, my kid. Up. <laughs> you just take the yeah. F. You just take the take F and the move F. on. Yeah. 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 All right, now we must move on. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.